how is morale this morning, Tim? Uh, it's, it's a little down. It's it's uh, gray and rainy here, as it always is after a Cowboys defeat, especially a large one. If, but uh, but we will soldier on. Uh, fingers being pointed this morning in Dallas. I think a lot less than usual. I mean, I think it's very weird when you lose a big game like that, and about the worst that I that some of us could come up with was. You know, why were you clocking the ball with 48 seconds to go? Okay, that wasn't an outrageously bad decision. It kind of made sense because they were trying to score a touchdown. And it led to them kicking the field goal a little earlier than you would have liked. But still, if you, I don't think you can play thinking, well, if we give Aaron Rodgers 30 seconds, we have no chance. I mean, you ought to be able to, to stop him. But I, nobody can right now. What did you expect yesterday? I expected Dallas to win. I I mean, obviously, I knew Green Bay and Rodgers was great. Uh, I just thought the health of the Cowboys, I thought they'd be able to run the ball all day, which they sort of did. But, I mean, the the defense was terrible early. And, you know, they they weren't ready. And some of those plays Green Bay caught them on, I thought that was a little little embarrassing. And And that's probably something that would probably be the most frustrating part for the Cowboys. But then, you know, to come back. I mean, you need 15 points, and that's a long way to go. And Dallas does two drives, and Dak gets the two-point conversion, and it's, you know, it's it's a new game. I thought at that point it's, you know, 50-50 how this is going to go. But, but I mean, Rodgers, this is the same role he was on when he when he won it all here six years ago. He's playing that same way, and that's that's tough to beat. What's the feeling like in the building when Rodgers gets the ball, 35 seconds to go? I think people thought that's a lot of time. And uh, even when Bailey was kicking it, I thought, you know, if he makes it, they really needed to get it down to 15 or 20 or something because they got timeouts. You knew they had time for four or five plays if they needed them. But, I mean, they got the sack. I mean, it looked like they had they'd done their job. Stop one Hail Mary, keep them from going 40 yards, and, and this thing's going to go to overtime. And that's – that throw and catch to Cook that you've been showing. I mean, it's just it's just nobody else makes that throw, and and a lot should be said for Cook, the play he made to keep his feet in. That's that's a fabulous play. I know uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman visited the topic during the game with uh, Tony Romo. Uh, what about in the uh, press room? Uh, did did you guys bring up Tony Romo that possibility? You mean when it was 14-3, to 3, did I tweet that Jason Garrett's utility belt is buzzing? It appears to be a phone from the suites. Uh, yes, I might have tweeted that. It might have come up. Now, I don't think anybody thought it was a logical thing to do. I mean, it wasn't it's not like Dak was playing horribly, but they were, they were getting out of it early. I mean, 21-3 to 3 is, is a long way to come back. But, but you know, at, at the end, you look at it, and Dak threw for over 300 yards. He had one bad interception. You know, Rodgers threw an interception. So, uh, you know, that it, it, it's a fun thing to consider, but it would have been a ridiculous move at any point in time. Now, the question is, will he, will he, will he be here again? And, and Jerry Jones insists that he thinks he will, and none of us believe that can be true. Can you trade Tony Romo? And if you do, how much does, <clears throat> does Dallas have to bite off here to get Romo to wherever he wants to go or get something in return? And what do you get in return for him? I don't think you get much. I mean, I think at this, I mean, people saw him execute four pass plays in Philadelphia. And if they're going to go from that and say, hey, he's fine. He can come play 15 games for us. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, it costs money, but I mean, I, either whether they, whether they release him, it costs dead money. Whether you trade him, it costs money, but the salary cap's going to be, what, $160 million? They'll have room to do it if they choose to do it. And so I, it just it doesn't make sense to have that. He'll be 37. He, he will barely played for two years. It doesn't make sense to have him sitting around. I know, I know Jerry Jones feels the exact opposite, and I know people who know him who say he thinks they need him next year as the backup, mm-hmm. not, as, not as competition. But I think that would be a crazy situation to to continue. Well, you're saying to Tony Romo, you're not good enough for this job. You can't compete for this job. I just don't feel like Tony Romo is going to sit there and go, you know what? 
at this point in my life where I see uh, some of these other quarterbacks at my age, Brady or Breeze, still playing and at a high level, yeah, I'm just going to accept this and be a backup here. I just can't imagine that happening. And that would loom every time Dak Prescott had a suspect game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, think I don't think Tony has enjoyed this season at all. No. Uh, I think you can see that in the brief times he has spoken uh, to the media. Uh, and he's got to think, you know, John Elway was 37. He won his first Super Bowl. There, there. You know, he, he probably feels like I'm fresh. I haven't played much, <laughs> but I'm, I'm fresh. And I didn't start playing until I was 26. So I've got years left. I want to go play. And I don't blame you for feeling that way. He's uh, Tim Kalashaw, Dallas Morning News and Around the Horn Star. Uh, who do you compare the brashness of Aaron Rodgers to? Is there another athlete who comes to mind? Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, Pablo Torre. <laughs> um, uh, that, that's a good uh, – I haven't thought of it in those terms. Um, because, because to me, it's not – it is brassness for sure. But I think his answer was just honest yesterday. I mean, I, I think he doesn't think in a million years that throw was that great. He probably thinks he made two or three earlier in the game that were better than that. I mean, he makes – I mean, as great as Tom Brady is, he doesn't make the throws Aaron Rodgers does. He doesn't have to, but but I, I don't think he, he throws – I don't think anybody throws the football like he does. Well, that last – you know, you're going to roll left, throw back, 36-yard right. dart, keep him in bounds long enough, you know, to get both feet down and then set up the game-winning field goal. After the previous play uh-huh. where you had been sacked, held on to the yeah. football – you know, that's that's impressive stuff, man. That's heavy stuff when you're watching it. Yeah, and when you rolled out left, everybody, okay, this is when he drifts out to the left, that's when he's going to just launch the Hail Mary. He's got three receivers running down the right and throw it across the field. And then it's like he sees this, and it's like, how does he see that window? Like, I can throw this laser 40 yards, and this guy can keep his yeah. toes inbounds, and, and it worked. Uh, Dallas needs to do what in the offseason? Well, they, they, they talked about defense last year, but they went the Zeke Elliott route, which was the way to go yeah. based on how he played. Uh, but, but they've still got some – they're still more, as much a pretender as a contender on defense. So they've got, to, uh, they've got to try to fix that up a little bit. I mean, they got – a lot of people get shredded by the Packers. Uh, uh, the Giants' defense is pretty good. They just did. But they've got to get some, some, some real – pass rush and real uh, ability up front and maybe somebody in the secondary would help too yeah although I, I i mean yeah i mean you watch yesterday's game and you think that um their corners are pretty good but but brandon carr's been here a long time and i don't, I don't know what his status will be so yeah for sure are you on around the horn tonight uh sir yes i am i i have a three show week coming up rare in this in this era of multiplicity <sighs> of panels don't be afraid to do so, a shout out to the listeners here because they root for you every time that you're on. I uh, I, I get a hold of Tony Reality to find the lineup, and uh, especially if you're on against Plasky or Woody, I I say root for Tim Callishaw. Timmy needs it, so don't be afraid to give him. a shout out here to the program. I would love I will I would love to, and uh, you would love to, or you will. I would love to. We tape the show, and <laughs> the camera will stop rolling, but I'll. I'll find a way around it. Maybe some sort of, uh, maybe some sort of physical signal. Do, I give you. do you? Th- will they edit it out? Is that what you're saying when you tape the show? <laughs> that they may, may edit it out. That that, that could happen. Okay. Yes. All right. But that doesn't mean it, that doesn't mean I won't be out there trying. I appreciate that. I appreciate okay. that. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thanks, buddy. That's uh, Tim Callishaw, Dallas Morning News. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.